it's Miss Emily and Atticus and welcome back to Sunday School at Home. We're so glad that you guys are joining us today. Atticus, how are we going to start our lesson today? Prayer. Prayer. Do we have any updates to tell anybody? I don't think anything exciting has happened since last Sunday, has it? Uh, some of our flowers bloom. Some of our flowers are blooming. We have some seedlings popping up. We've planted some seeds um, in the house, but in a container. Not just on the floor, because that'd be weird. So we have some seeds that have popped up, which is exciting, which can remind us, this is great actually, and I think it's why Easter's in the spring, but it can remind us about new life, right? In the springtime, we see new life as plants come back to life or new plants come up from seeds. And that can remind us of ourselves when we know and love Jesus uh, Jesus gives us that same new life, right? Know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is this making sense? Yeah. Do I sound crazy? No. Okay, that's good. Hopefully you guys are also following along with the new life in Jesus because he died and took our sins and now we can have new life through the Holy Spirit, etc. Got it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, why don't we start with a prayer today? Lord, we thank you so much for new life, that we no longer have to be dead in our sins, but have new life in you and what you have done for us by dying on the cross, defeating death, and giving us the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would help us um, during our lesson today to learn deeply about you and who you are and what that means for us. Thank you that we can gather here together, and um, amen. That's the end of my prayer. <laughs> Sometimes prayers go like that, and that's okay. Your prayers do not have to like sound really specific, right? We're just talking to God, which is so great. So Atticus, you got your gear. Hopefully you guys have your paper and pencil. Addie's going to go hang out over there, and we'll get started on our lesson for today. All right, Atticus is over there. Atticus, say hi. Hi. He's still here following along. Hopefully you guys have your pencil and paper. I have this lovely blackboard. And we are going to get started on our lesson. Now, I also hope you have like a snack and a drink and some way to feel cozy and comfy while we do our learning time to make it extra enjoyable. I did have a marshmallow Easter egg, but what happened, Atticus? You ate it. I ate it, but why didn't we have it on the video? Because it took too long. It took too long. It took me forever to chew up the marshmallow and I was just sitting here looking silly. Anyways, let's get started on our lesson today. Another miraculous catch from John 21, also known as Story 119 from your Gospel Story Bible. So if you guys have this, open it up. Bloop! Story 119. Let's write that down over here. And next week, do I usually do this now or I do this later? We do our story first? No, I do it now. Do your bubble for next week. Remember, we have two more weeks, I think, of stories. This one, next week. Oh, and then we might have one more the week after. So we have two or three more weeks of our learning time here. And then we're going to be doing Pilgrim's Progress, which... Let me grab it right over here. We're going to be doing um, a special Pilgrim's Progress reading time. And you guys are going to get those adventure guides um, sent to you. So they go along with this in about three, two to three weeks. I don't know, it depends how long it takes for the adventure guys to come. They're in the mail to me and then I have to mail them to you guys. So, back to here. I'm getting really off topic. Uh, well, not really. Now I'm just rambling. Next week, story 120. And that comes from Matthew 28. Verses 11 to 20. And it also comes from Luke 24, 45 to 49. So write that down. Read story 120 before our lesson next week. Now we're going to open it up to another miraculous catch. Last week, oh, Doubting Thomas, yes. So remember we saw Jesus' um, death on the cross, his resurrection when he came back to life after defeating death. Then we saw 
Um, people saw him alive. Last week we talked about doubting Thomas and how he didn't believe Jesus. Now this week is another example of when Jesus was alive after the death and resurrection. So uh, the disciples, they're still a little bit confused. They don't really know what's going on. What um, They're not just like hanging out with Jesus all the time. He just kind of seems to appear to them every now and again. And so for this instance, they're not sure what they should be doing now that Jesus has died and risen from the dead. And so they decide to go out fishing because a bunch of them are fishermen. That's their job. So they're like, you know what? Let's just go fishing tonight. We'll go see if we can catch some fish. So off they go in this boat. It's all night. They've been fishing and fishing. How many fish did they catch Atticus all night? Zero. Zero fish. No fish at all. It's finally like almost the morning and they're like in their fishing boat. Just falling asleep, hoping there's a fish. That was me snoring and jumping awake, just in case it looked weird. <laughs> Anyways, they're out there fishing, falling asleep. It's almost the morning. They've been fishing all night long and they look off in the distance and they're like, oh, there's a man over there. And all of a sudden the man yells at them and is like, hey, how many fish you got out there? And they're like, no fish at all. And then he says, what does he catch tell them? Some fish. He says, go catch some fish. talk like this. Atticus is talking like this. Can you guys hear me when I talk like this? Say it again. He, he, he says throw the nets over on the right side of the boat. Right, so throw your nets on the other side of your boat. Should that make any difference? Yes. No! <laughs> that should not make any difference when you're out fishing. But, but they caught 153 fish. They catch 153 fish. There's so many fish that they can't even haul in their net. And as soon as this happens, Peter realizes Jesus is that man they see out on the shore. And he's so excited. He launches himself out of the boat. He swims in. He's like, I'm coming. I'm coming to see you, Jesus. And the rest of the guys are like, well, I would like to jump in too, but somebody's got to haul in these fish. So they bring the fish into shore. Then when they get in shore, Jesus is like, oh, let's have a breakfast of fish. Do you have some? And that's when they count them all 153 and they cook some up for breakfast. Then... Jesus wants to talk to Peter. Now, I really wish that we had done the story of Peter denying Jesus. We didn't really have time before Easter, but we did talk about it a little bit. So Peter, three times after Jesus has been arrested, denies knowing Jesus. He's like, no, I don't know that guy. No way, not a chance. There's no way at all that I'm friends with that guy that you have taken, right? He's arrested, he's been taken. And so then, oh, and what's the important part? So after three times he denies Jesus, what happens? The rooster crows. The rooster crows and Peter is ashamed of himself because he's like, no way, I wouldn't do that. Remember we talked about that in one of the lessons? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, and so Peter's ashamed. And then so now here's an important part that also plays with that part because I was looking it up in my Bible. Ooh, maybe we'll talk about it after. Um... So then Jesus speaks with Peter and says to him, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, you know that I love you, Lord. And Jesus says to Peter, feed my lambs. Then he asks Peter a second time, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Peter says, take, uh, Jesus says to Peter, take care of my sheep. And then a third time, does this sound familiar? Yes. A third time, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Peter starts to get frustrated. He's like, you know everything, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. Then he tells Peter that he is going to die serving God. And he tells Peter, follow me. So these three times, actually, maybe we'll talk about it when we read through later. So that's kind of the end of this. So we're going to now draw our picture. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to draw guys in the boat fishing. We're going to draw them having caught their fish down here. And then we're going to draw Peter and Jesus over here. So let's get our boxes on over this way today. And starting up here, we're going to do a quick picture because our lessons seem to get longer and longer. Okay, we have a fishing boat. We have a bunch of guys. Just draw some like quick guys like this. They're all hanging out in the boat. 
This guy's sleeping. Oh, come on, sleepy. And they're all just kind of like so tired. So I'm giving them a little, this is my tired face for these guys. And their fishing net is on the other side of the boat. So we're gonna pretend it's hanging down in the water like this from the opposite side of the boat. Let's do the water. La, 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 la. And then we have the shoreline. We're gonna just kind of draw it like this because we're gonna use it for both pictures. So then Jesus tells them to throw it in on the other side. So over here is Jesus on the shore. Do, 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 do. And he's just saying to them, throw it on the other side. So we'll do speech bubble. Maybe we'll be more specific, like throw. Oh, there's an R in throw. Throw your net on the other side. So then we're gonna draw them having done that here. So here they are again, their boat has just sort of drifted. We'll say their boat's drifted over here. Now they've tossed their net in on this side. And, okay, so draw your net. And it's filled with fish. So just draw some quick fish like this. Loop de doo I'm not going to draw 153 fish because I'll be here way too long. But just make it look kind of full. And then there's all these guys. One, two, three, four. We'll say there's four left. I'm not quite sure. I have to read about how many there are. Uh, and they're all, hmm? Oh, I think it's like six or seven. I don't know. We can find out from our story. So they're all like, oh, look at all the fish. And then look, somebody's missing because he's jumped off into the water and he's swimming away. We'll draw the water a little bit more like this. Okay, so head, body with feet back here, swimming arms. Try drawing some swimming arms like that kind of swimming. I hope you can swim better than that. Okay, so there's his swimming arms, and that's just the back of his head, so we'll just draw hair. He's swimming into shore. It's Peter. He's going in to see Jesus. Now, oh, the other thing. We're going to draw a little fire here because they decided to cook their fish on the fire. Uh, close enough. Okay, I'm going to just scooch over this way. Now we're going to draw Jesus and Peter talking, but we're not gonna write down what they say because today we're doing something a little bit different. Okay, so Jesus is here. Do, do, do. I need a little time. Oh, that's fine, you just take your time. Jesus and Peter is going to look like this. Well, he's got weird hair, but that's okay. That's his mustache. He's got kind of a funny straight across mustache. We'll give him a little bit of a beard like this. Okay, so we've got Jesus and Peter. They are gonna say something, but they're not going to say it exactly as it is um, in here because I want to help you guys to understand what it is Jesus is saying to Peter. All right, now we're gonna open up the Bible. We're opening it up to the book of John. So look here, we're like three quarters of the way through near the back. John 21, I think I must have got some marshmallow in my book, it's all it was stuck together. Yikes, don't eat marshmallows when you're reading your Bible. It's not a good idea. Okay, so John 21, we're gonna be reading the whole chapter because that's where this story comes from. So, here we go. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon, Peter, oh, Atticus, count on your fingers because you can count how many people are actually in the boat, okay? 
So follow along. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of the disciples were together. Okay, how many how many we got? Seven. Seven. Okay, so not accurate, but you know, close enough. So they're all going out. Where I fell off of where I was. Okay, number three. Verse three, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of, jo son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to, glory, to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So that's where our story stops. But there's one more section here from chapter um, 21 from John. It says, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say this to him, that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. This is kind of a cool part that wasn't really mentioned um, in our story. It's John. So the, per the disciple whom Jesus loved is John. He's the one writing the story. Does it mean Jesus doesn't love the other disciples? He only just yeah. loves one of them? Yeah. No, but John is speaking about himself in this way. Because when you know and love Jesus, like your identity is that Jesus loves you. He loves you exactly as you are. And that's how you can be known 
to everyone else. You can know that in yourself. Jesus loves me. All right, you guys, now we're going to have a look specifically at this part of the story where Jesus talks with Peter. So we see in our story today, three times, Jesus asks Peter what? Atticus. What does Jesus ask Peter? Do you love me? Do you love me? So we have three times. Now, if we can remember back to what we talked about before, Peter three times denies Jesus. He denies knowing Jesus. He's like, no way do I know that guy. Not a chance in the world. What does Peter do in these three? Does he do a good job or does he totally mess up? Mess up. He totally messes up. Then Jesus raises from the dead. Now we're over here. And what does it seem like he's done with these three times he's talking with Peter? Done something good. Peter has done something good and Jesus is showing Peter that he forgives him, right? That's what Atticus said earlier. And it's true. Jesus forgives Peter even though he totally blew it. And not only does he forgive Peter, he's not like, I forgive you, but you're out of the disciples. What does he ask Peter to do? Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Take care of my flock. Who are the lambs, sheep, and flock? People that believe in Jesus. People who believe in Jesus. So Jesus not only forgives Peter, but he has special work for him to do. So today, when we're writing our bubble, we're just going to write something that helps us uh, understand sort of the whole part that Jesus is talking about. So we're not writing, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my flock, but we're going to write what it is that Jesus has done. What has Peter done? And what is this little bit showing us? So today, we're gonna be writing down, Peter, you really blew it, because he did, right? When he denied Jesus, Peter really blew his friendship with Jesus. But I'm still going to use you for my good works. How does that make you feel? Happy. Do you ever blow anything, Atticus? Do you ever mess up? Yes. Yes, do I? I mean, I'm perfect. Look at me. I never mess up anything. (laughs) I mess up all the time. Like, I don't know, 100 times a day? 200? A million. A million. Atticus thinks a million times. 2.2 trillion. 2.2 trillion. So there, you've got it from Atticus. If anybody knows, it's him. I mess up all the time, and yet Jesus has good work for us. So this is super important. Let's write this down. Grab your pencil. Make a nice big bubble, because it's actually quite a bit. Okay. So, Peter, Atticus is too tired. Have a bite of your snack. We didn't have enough snack breaks. I'm going to have a drink of water. That's going to give me my super writing powers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, Peter, you really blew it. Thankfully, Jesus is like, he's a lot more gentle. This is my kind of talking. Jesus clearly didn't say, Peter, you really blew it. Jesus is really nice. Uh, Okay, so Peter, you really blew it. Or you could say you really messed up. You really blew it. But, make this big. But, I'm still going to use you for my good works. Going to use you for my good works. And in the story, we also hear that Jesus is even going to die because he is working for Jesus. And so that also shows like... Peter's heart clearly changed so much, right? Before he was not willing to even be friends with Jesus when Jesus was caught. But then he, later on, he loves Jesus so much that he is willing to die himself because of Jesus, because of knowing and loving Jesus. So we see that Peter has a severe heart change, right? His heart has been changed in such a good way. Atticus is lying down during our lesson now. Atticus, you have to draw your eye and your key. That's what we're going to do next. I'm going to close up my Bible and put it there. 
So let's draw these boxes down below. What do we see about Jesus in this story? And what is the key part? Oh my goodness. You'd think I'd get better at drawing the key, but I think every week I might actually get worse. Close enough. Okay, so again, remember last week we wrote for the second time, Jesus is alive? We're writing it for a third time. Jesus, Jesus is alive. alive. Oh, happy day. Good one. Atticus loves that song. Okay, so again, we're writing, what do we see? We see Jesus is alive because again, it is evidence that Jesus rose from the grave. So every time we're going to write it down. So Jesus is alive. He also has work for us to do in his name, right? Just like he spoke to Peter, he has work for each of us to do in his name. We need to follow him and do those same things. Tend his flock, feed his sheep and feed his lambs. So Jesus is alive and has work for us to do in his name. Okay, Atticus, what is the most important part of this story? Right. He totally forgave Peter. What does that mean for us? That he has forgiven us too. He's forgiven us too, but it also means that when we mess up, he still can use us for his good works. So here we're going to say, Jesus uses us to build his kingdom even when we really mess up. Okay, so Jesus uses us to build his kingdom even when we really destroy it. Well, no, we're not really destroying it. We just sometimes really mess up when we don't trust in Jesus, right? And how is it that we're building his kingdom? helping other people to know and love him. Like his kingdom is his family of people because it's not like space. We're not helping him gain a kingdom of space. God already owns all the space, but it is the people who come to know and love Jesus. And how do we do that, Atticus? Let's see. By telling other people about Jesus and what he's done for them and helping them to come to know him and love him and understand him. All those good things. So there we have it. Atticus, bring your paper over. Let's see what you did on yours today. I'm pretty sure some of it's going to be missing. Somebody's been lazing around over there. All right, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, fishing, guys. Oh, they look so sad. Oh, I like your Jesus. Where's Peter? Oh, I didn't know that. I did that. Atticus missed the most important part of our lesson today. But that's okay. He was here hanging out. And he can see mine on the board. So don't worry if you get so tired that you can't draw anymore. Like this little guy. All right, you guys. Now we're going to do ba -ba -ba -ba, Philippians 2, 3 to 11. Today we are practicing the first few verses and learning the new verse number 7. Hopefully you guys have this printed out. If not, print off a copy from the link below in the YouTube description box. And you can also find a link for these should hold these different. Our scripture memory verses that we've already done and you can print it and cut it up and then you'll have all of these and you can just give yourself a quiz. How often should they be quizzing themselves on these? Uh, 600 times per day. 600 times per day. There you go. No, like once a day. That would be great. No, 600. Okay, so, all right. Atticus is going to do them 600 times today. No, yeah. That is going to take you no, all no, no, day no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, so now we're you doing Philippians 2, 3 to 11. It. One time, you guys practice it 600 times. <laughs> You're so silly. Okay, so Philippians 2, 3 to 11. Quiz me. You guys try and say it along with me. Um, I can never remember. Do nothing. Do nothing. I can never remember the starting few words. So if you don't know that, like, just look. It's okay to look to get a reminder.
Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Take... Have this. Have this. Oh. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now seven. Now seven. Please repeat after me. But emptied himself. But emptied himself. By taking the form of a servant. By taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men. Being born in the likeness of men. (laughs) Great job. I'm in. All right, we're going to do one of these um, scripture memories really quickly. I'm going to quiz you. No, I'm going to quiz you because you quizzed me already. So, Atticus, you get to do so many good ones. Uh, Ooh, ah, e, ah, ooh. Isaiah, did we do that recently? We did. How about Psalm 63.3? Which starts with because. Because your steadfast love has comforted me, my lips will praise you. Incorrect! But that was great. You got most of it right. It says, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So see, that's why it's good to be practicing. Your scripture memory verses. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us for our lesson today. Are you glad? Did you like this lesson? Yes. Yeah, it was a good one, I think. So we'll see you guys again next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.